Awesome. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to what is really the last broadcast uh, before we hit the summer. I've got a very, very special guest this morning, and I'm so thrilled that you can join me. Today is Dr. Price Pritchett. Uh, Price Pritchett is a renowned expert in fast growth and breakthrough strategies with a 40 plus year career in working with organizations around the globe, all of the fortune companies in mergers and acquisition and change management. I'm not gonna talk about him, I want to bring him on right now and say a huge welcome to Dr. Price Pritchett. Good morning, Price. Good morning, Libby. Hello, How everybody. are you this morning? Uh, great Monday morning. It is a great Monday morning. Um, I want to encourage everybody to write their questions in the chat. I will check that from time to time. I'm just looking off to the side here now so that I can make sure that, uh, that we are open and available. If you've got questions, please put them in the comments and uh, I'll, I'll look over every once in a while and try to get to those questions. Um, so Price, this is fantastic. You do not do a lot of these types of interviews and podcasts. Uh, so I feel very privileged and humbled that you would be my guest this morning. Well, and my pleasure. <laughs> Where I want to start this morning is really with uh, the work that you have done. Now, Pritchett has been around for 40 plus years as an organization working in mergers and acquisition, change management, the big stuff that organizations are doing to get fast growth and breakthrough performance. It, there, there must have been a pivotal moment, though, for you in terms of how you came to think of all of this hardcore organization work as really people focused? Well, you can look at any organization and I don't care what their technology is or what their machinery is or their facilities. If there's nobody, no people there, <clears throat> there is no business there is uh there is no revenue there is no client activity mm -hmm. um and of course my background is in psychology you know and with the doctorate in psychology and um so I, obviously I, I guess obviously i came at it from a human perspective and i think that's the thing that kind of makes our message unique because i understand organizations um uh, and 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 just the mechanics of running running a corporation or a non not-for-profit or whatever but um i wanted to play at the big table that's why we ended up uh, i focused us on mergers and acquisitions just basically on integration strategy how do you bring to huge organizations or small organizations together. To that point, Libby, there's an interesting statistic. Westinghouse, this was two decades ago. I saw an email, an in-house email at Westinghouse uh, talking about their deal activity. And the basically, this is not verbatim, but basically it said in their experience, small deals were every bit as difficult to make work as the big deals. Hmm. It's about execution. And that's the same thing that happens when people, individuals, you, me, the average person out there on the street, when we try to do a really big fast growth step, a breakthrough step. And so um, the corporate world has been my laboratory mm -hmm. for, for these years. And um, it's, it's interesting how so many of the dynamics of fast growth in an organization parallels, I mean, the issues, the, the challenges, the problems and so forth, how it mirrors what you see at the individual level. Yeah. It, it's interesting. I was thinking about this this morning and, and we're going to, we're going to start talking about uh, personal breakthrough and U squared. Uh, which is what so many individuals here on the call are probably very familiar with. 
it's funny. Organizations are these entities where they do think about fast growth. They do think about breakthrough performance and how can we achieve more and, you know, what's the next level of success for us. As individuals, though, sometimes we kind of shy away. So there's this ends up being this huge disconnect between these executives with big ideas and innovative breakthrough things that they want to be doing and the individual saying, <laughs> like, back off. It, it, it's, it's somebody else's idea. And so what you've really done with a lot of your work is help to bring those two entities together to say, we're all individuals on this journey. How can we all start to think about ourselves and our opportunities in a much bigger and broader way? You know, I think that's what's exciting. Uh, that's why I went into uh, work in mergers and acquisitions again, because it, I wanted to be at the biggest table mm -hmm. uh, for several reasons. You can make more money there. You can have a bigger impact there. Uh, you're dealing with system-wide issues. But those system-wide issues, as you bring two companies together, I, I'll, I'll say it again, they are so similar to what happens at the individual level when you try to go from U to U squared, when you try to make that quantum leap, a real breakthrough. And that's another thing that I would say kind of is different about the message I'm, I'm writing about is that we all have goals. Mm -hmm. We all have aspirations. We would like a, a little bit better job, a little bit better house, uh, a little bit better income or, or whatever. But really what we're talking about uh, in the U squared book and its sequel, the quantum leap strategy is we're talking about a step change. We're talking mm -hmm. about not a 10% improvement or gain. We're talking about doubling, tripling or whatever. And um, that's so possible. Here's what's interesting. The people I talk to, the people that email me, write me, call now and then, or catch me, you know, when I've done a keynote or something or a break at a conference and they'll talk about this big ambition they've got. I would say 95% of the time they are so reachable, mm -hmm. They're reachable. Um, but yeah, to your point, um, they scare themselves away. Mm -hmm. And that's it. the quantum leap lab, this new program that, that we're offering, it really gets into the psychology of this, uh, uh, of big behavior, yeah, big gains, uh, because that's where the difficulty comes. It comes in execution. Same thing with big corporations doing a, a big merger. Uh, we've done close to $400 billion worth of deals over the years. That's close to half a trillion dollars worth of deals. And um, so much of the time, the deals are very valid. They're, they're well conceived, but the execution is where it breaks down. And that's the same thing with people wanting to make that quantum leap. And I think a big part of the problem is one, they, own, they don't understand what's going to happen to them as they go into that exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Companies don't understand what's going to happen to them. And the biggest resistance when someone's trying to make a quantum leap does not come from the outside world. It does not come from the constraints and limitations that you're facing because you always have scarce resources in some regard. Yeah. Um, the big challenges come from within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your biggest challenge is going to be you. Yes, I've I've lived that many times. Yeah. And it it you you write a lot about the counterintuitive moves, right? Because when we're faced with something big, that resistance comes from. Well, how am I going to do that? I'm already a busy person. I already am working my tail off. I already. You know, I, I don't have any money. I, you know, I, I don't have any, uh, I've never done this before. You know, all of those reasons. 
and it and it stops us. You said something really interesting to me, and I know you've written it, but it it was when you said it to me a few weeks ago when we were together. You said, you know what the biggest problem people have with their aiming point, the thing that they really want, is that they get stuck because their aiming point isn't big enough. I was like, okay, that's very counterintuitive. So I'd love to hear some of the some of the things you talk about MED, minimum, minimum effective dose, and other ideas that are counterintuitive to how we really break through and do the big things. Well, desire is the driver. Um, if you set a goal, that's a ho-hum goal. It's room temperature goal. It's easy to quit it. Mm -hmm. It's easy to just let it fizzle out. Um, this, the research is solid on this. Big goals work much better than small goals or medium-sized goals. I mean, that's just solid behavioral science data. Mm -hmm. um, and lots of times when people will set a goal and then they'll start struggling with it and they'll think, well, this is a struggle, you know, man, I'm feeling kind of beat up here. I guess, I guess I ought to modulate. I guess I ought to step down a click and that, and when they do that, that absolutely sabotages the whole thing because mm -hmm. it takes the fire out of the drill. Yeah. And um, so you should set big goals for several reasons. One, just they work better. Secondly, if it's a really big goal, it does that crucial thing. It forces you out of your current modus operandi mm -hmm. because your current modus operandi, your current approach ain't delivering a quantum leap. Right. It's not. I mean, if it is, you're, you're cool and you're not calling me or you're not reading you squared or anything. I mean, if you've got it going and it's working, you don't have a problem, but when, when you modulate, when you decide to scale down, um, it, it's, it's really putting the, the leap at risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other thing that's kind of counterintuitive is people misconstrue their mistakes. They try to avoid mistakes. They think that, oh, I'm screwing up. This thing is breaking down. Yeah. It's going to that. If you're not, if you're not having that kind of experience, then your goal is way too low. Right. Um, it's kind of crazy. We think that we're supposed to get a quantum leap right. And the mistakes, the failures are when we get blocked in, you know, some way or another. And we think we should shut down. Um, again, the failures are there to teach you what to do next. Mm -hmm. They're there for you to leverage. It's kind of crazy because let's say you got a couple and they decide to start a family. They don't know beans about <laughs> raising a baby. They just don't. I can tell you that. I mean, we, we have three kids my wife and I, but particularly that first one, I just go into it blindly. Mm -hmm. um, there is no perfect merger. I, I, I've watched for decades, these companies going in and the best thing you can do is prepare them for what's coming because things are going to get worse before they get better. Right. Uh, the first signs of progress or failure. Now, how counterintuitive is that? Um, so you need to welcome failure, not let it scare you off. Um, Super Bowl, show me a perfect Super Bowl. The mm. Kansas City Chiefs, how many screw ups did they make? You make adjustments in, in pr pretty much any game. <clears throat> There's another thing uh, that's counterintuitive, is, and that's the simplicity angle. Mm -hmm. I think a big mistake that 
people make is in their head, they get the idea that this is complicated stuff. And, and um, the secret is to simplify. People so overcomplicate what they need to do. Yeah. And that's why we've got four steps in the quantum leap strategy. And it's a very elegant formula. Um, that's methodology. That's process. It's, it's kind of it's strategy, you know, the strategy. It's not it's not your personal strategy on how you're going to reach your goal and, and its nuances out there. I don't know what your goal would be, but I can tell you what your strategy or your methodology ought to be. And these four fundamentals, you know, is that pick your a shoot a, a ridiculously stretch aiming point. Secondly, immediately begin. Mm -hmm. Relentless pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. Past all the mistakes, the breakdowns, and so forth. And the third thing is the mind work. And this is where people, boy, they shortchange this. This is huge. It's where the yeah. magic happens. And it's it seems too easy for people. And, yeah. and, and so they'll abandon it. The fourth thing is tracking and keeping a clear sense of, of what's working, what's not, and, and so forth. Now, beyond that, there are thousands of tactics you could use, but people get distracted by this new shiny tactic over here. Well, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. And they abandon the core, the four core principles. I think that's kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, you know, that uh, I study the U squared book every day um, in all its glory, 36, put it in screen, 36 pages. Mine's got lots of markings in it. Um, we, we basically, my husband and I sort of go like this, stop. And then we study whatever these two pages are. And it, it's absolutely fascinating how it's always the perfect message that we need to focus on. And one of the chapters, and I think it's, uh, I don't know whether I'd call it my favorite, is choose a different set of risks, knowing that something is always at risk. And it, it's interesting. You say you can never escape risk. You can only decide which risks to take. And at the same time, you talk about uh, not being reckless. And I can tell you some days inside my quantum leap, whatever one it is that I'm, you know, striving for. And I've got one right now that is feeling some days like, was I reckless? And as soon as I ask myself that, it's like I, I get relief because I think, well, if I'm asking myself that question, I must be shooting for something really big. And yes, it excites me. And so... I'm, I'm on the path. Now, what can I do today around that? And it's like, it just, when you get into this work, you just start to ask yourself different questions, especially when you're stuck. And it, it alleviates stress. I mean, I don't know, price, it's like a little bit of magic or something. What is that? Well, I wrote the book to be inspirational, but not ridiculous. I am a very, very practical person. Um, we had a tagline that we used on some of our training programs years ago. And the tagline was face reality. Do what works. Okay. Um, and just going toward elegant simplicity. I think the best line that Tony Robbins ever had come out of his mouth was that complexity is the enemy of execution. Mm -hmm. It just kills me that I didn't say that. You know, <laughs> I think that, that is such a wonderful line. Um, and the U squared book while it, I, I know it hits some people as kind of this woo woo stuff out there, you know, and, and kind of unrealistic and pop psychology, but it's not. That's the thing. This thing is grounded in 
serious behavioral research. I did my doctoral dissertation on personal breakthrough and self-directed change. Um, so that's when my real focus on this started was back when I was in college and uh, particularly when I started the, the PhD in psychology. And that's, that's still the big challenge. I don't care whoever's on this call this morning. Um, I can tell you unequivocally, your biggest problem will be you. It's not going to be the size of your goal. It's not going to be your constraints and limitations. It's not going to be the lack of support you get from people that have been your best supporters. That's mm -hmm. what's funny. That just kind of turns on you because you scare them and they want to protect you. Right. <laughs> and uh, uh, and the, the villain voice in your head is telling you, don't be stupid. You could get hurt here. You know, mm -hmm. um, this is an outrageous goal. You're going to embarrass yourself. And that kind of brings me to another piece of Nobel Prize winning research by Daniel Kahneman, who's a psychologist. He won the Nobel Prize in economics for this research that found, and you know this research, that mm -hmm. we weigh losses or even potential losses twice as heavily as potential gains or actual gains. So you start thinking about that. Now I'm going to go back to the merger world again. This is what happens to an entire workforce when they find out they're being acquired and merged. They start thinking, how can I lose in this situation? Mm -hmm. What can go bad? How do I protect me? And there's all of these me issues. Um, and they start, they're just consumed by the downside. Yeah. And they don't give equal consideration and thought time to what could go right here. Mm -hmm. How much better risk is this when you really study it? So it's yeah. back to that risk thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I've seen it several times in organizations. I've been, uh, um, what do I call it? Victim. <laughs> to organizational changes, you know, things put on me. And so I think we all know uh, the feeling of that. Uh, but sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and look, there's a realistic fear, too, because when a company's being acquired and merged, it's kind of like a card game. Some win, some lose, and some break even. Well, the people are going to win, get a promotion, get a pay increase, whatever. They're all for it. And or maybe they just like change. I mean, they're very change adaptive and it sounds interesting, exciting and so forth. The people who can see very clearly or at least think they could certainly easily lose in this situation. Um, well, they're very concerned. Appropriately so. Mm -hmm. Think about it. When you talk with people about the worst thing that ever happened to them in their life, again, well over half the time, I'd say two thirds, three fourths of the time, that worst thing that ever happened to them as described at the time turns out later as construed as that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Um, but boy, uh, so it's kind of an optimism, pessimism thing. And we know the optimists win in the big picture. They just do. Again, you want research? I can quote you research until Christmas. The studies showing how optimists benefit the most. Uh, but pessimists or pessimistic thinking, it has one big good thing going for it. Pessimism says, be careful. Hmm. Be careful. And once it's gotten that message to you, it needs to shut up because rarely is it much help in going beyond the warning. Mm -hmm. Optimism does far more to help a person make use of that warning, make, you know, make good constructive gains as a result of that. I love that. 
I love that. Pessimism has one good thing about it. It warns us. Be careful. I like that. Um, in the time that we've got, Price, I want to talk about the U -squ the new program, the U Squared Lab. So this is a very interesting concept uh, where it's two days live in person with you and with Dr. Kim Webster uh, in your offices, limited to 10 people. That is a very exclusive opportunity to really go through this idea of personal performance breakthrough, the U squared quantum leap lab. What is, I mean, beyond the exclusivity of it, what is this program going to do that is completely unique to anything else that is that is out there. And, and I want you to be listening as a, as a business leader, as an entrepreneur, I, somebody who is already, you're here today, probably because you're already successful and wanting to get to that next breakthrough. So talk a little bit about the lab. And as you start, I'm just going to turn my head because I've got a link to uh, more information about it as well that I'm just going to pop into the chat. Okay. Well, there are two key things I think that are major differentiators. First, I like small groups. My favorite group working in the corporate world is with an executive team or board of directors. Um, give me six to 12 people. You've got airtime. You can personalize the message. You can get down into real meanings and real issues. So there's that. Um, part of it's just because that's, I think, a wonderful size room full of people. Mm -hmm. um, and people will become, they share more. They explore themselves more. They will make themselves more vulnerable. And I don't go into this trying to make people vulnerable, but I will tell you this you're going to learn some things about yourself that you don't know mm -hmm. um, because of uh, a couple of instruments that we use that I've used for decades uh, in doing uh, in-depth uh, psychological assessments of top executives for companies, presidents, division heads, plant managers, executive VPs, and things like that. We charge over $15,000 for any one of those executive assessments. We're going to use two of the key instruments in the lab. Um, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier, Libby, but the most crucial thing to making a quantum leap is the you. It is not the world context that you're operating in. Um, if you achieve a quantum leap, it will be because of you. Mm -hmm. If you don't make it, if you give up, abandon the, the idea, it will be because of you. I'd say in the handbook, a quantum leap is something you're already prepared to do. The only thing in the way is you. And so we try to get you the hell out of the way a little bit. We, it's, it's saying, here's what's coming because people don't understand what's coming yeah. and they misinterpret it. And um, so those are key differentiators, I think. And that's a little bit of a rationale for the small group size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I, I mean, I think it's going to be. Um, well, I don't even know how how astounding an experience it's, it's really going to be yet because I haven't done it, but it's um, the, I think the opportunity to, as you said, really experience something in a small group size where you're getting the personalized attention from both you and Kim. I, you know, you can go to lots of big conferences and, and walk away with some fabulous ideas and feel pumped up. I think this is like getting into the work. Yeah, I want to move you to a different place. Yeah. And, and you say something really interesting. I know we're, we're at the top of the hour, but 
uh, you talk a lot about day two. And day two is when, you know, the, the hype, the enthusiasm of the crowd, the whatever the reality is when you get back home, kind of goes, right, the air out of your balloon and, you know, back to my reality. And that's day two. And you cannot avoid day two. No, but you can prepare better for it. That's the thing. Yeah. And then you've heard me make the analogy and I'm, I'll give this real quickly here. But this is what I do when I'm meeting with an executive team that's merging. Okay. Cause they're all screwed up in their heads. They've got so many misconceptions about what's, what's about to land on top of them. But I'll say, here's what's coming. I remember years and years ago, Borg Warner chemical was being acquired by GE plastics. Borg Warner chemical executives called me in and I went and I did a senior management briefing on merger integration strategy. I've done these, I can't tell you how many I've done for major corporations. And we, so I spent the morning with Borg Warner chemical saying, here's what's coming. <laughs> okay. You can take it to the bank. You can write it down. Here's what's coming. And so I did that and I said, man, we wish GE plastics was using you in this deal. And I said, well, tell them that what well, they did. And then I got a call from GE plastics and they said, ah, we understand you talked with the board one anyway. But, so he said, why don't you come out and let's talk. We ended up working with them at the GE level. Um, but it's this idea of knowing what day two looks like mm -hmm. and how to get through day two, make the most of day two. And, um, yeah, we, that, that's a, it's a key thing in the, in the session. Yeah. Day two. I love it. Day two is, is the messy in the middle. It's the anguish and anxiety, but boy, at the end of that day, that's starting to look real pretty. <laughs> yeah. And um, <clears throat> this is special work. Yeah. It's, um, it's very gratifying. Um, and it really all comes down to the inside job. Yeah. Yeah. We could go on, but yeah. we've made a promise to people for this to be a 30 minute exercise. So our, our conversation rather. So I'm just going to flip to our last slide. Uh, Pritchett, you squared.com. I did put the link into the chat so that you can see that the dates for this event I uh, are listed, the prices listed, everything that you would need for that is listed. There is also the book, uh, the Pritchett Clips and the Masterclass. Uh, if you're not quite ready for the in-person experience or if the in-person experience has in the short term sold out, there are still opportunities uh, to start on your path to U squared. So Price, thank you so, so much for being my guest here this morning. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been on the call with us this morning. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you uh, at a future date live, talking about U squared, working on U squared and the quantum leap strategy. So thank you, Price. Thank you, Libby. This is All right. fun. Thank you. All right, everyone have a fantastic day.